this video will talk about how the people make decisions based on the utility maximization and how they make choice. First, we'll talk about the two good case. Second, we'll talk about the indirect utility function. Third, we will discuss the lump sum principle. Fourth, we'll discuss the expenditure minimization and finally the property of the expenditure functions. Let's get started. First is the two good case. Okay. So last time we know that if a consumer buy things, okay, they consume X and Y, they can earn utility. But they should be bounded because you cannot always buying, okay? You cannot always consuming. So everyone, each people in the room is subjected to a budget constraint. So in two good case, good X and good Y, okay, the budget constraint would be PXX plus PYY equal to i okay px is the price of x times the quantity of x number of x consumed plus py the price of y times number of y consumed is equal to the i so here in economics we assume that okay if we assume that the income is equal to all the expenditure so whenever you earn income okay you spend all so for this property we call this non satiation so we don't save okay in this in in this ex examples in this model we have no saving okay so how to find the optimal x and y that means how many x and y should be consumed so it depends on the budget constraint and the utility functions so budget constraint has this form okay px plus p y y to i so if you draw it in the diagram it is, it is a straight line. The y intercept is i divided by py, okay, and here is i divided by px, and you can see the slope is equal to px divided by py, okay. So, given the budget constraint, the consumer can select all the combinations, okay. Say the utility function may be something like this, okay. Then here you can see that oh, this consumer actually can increase the utility, so maybe he can increase to here, okay. Because at the U0, you can see that the budget constraint that means the consumer still have some budget to spend, okay. So they can, so the consumer can buy more good, good X and good Y as a result, they can leads to a higher utility level so what if this okay u2 okay u2 is not attained because it is over the budget constraint so the maximum that can be achieved the maximum the highest utility level that can be achieved is u1 okay and the optimal x and y will be determined by the tangent of the utility functions this indifference curve and the budget constraint. As a result, x star and y star, which are the optimal of the consumption, is determined. Okay, so here we can see that okay, utility is maximized if the slope of indifference curve equal to the slope of the budget line. Okay, slope of the indifference curve is negative ux divided by uy slope of the budget line is negative px divided by py okay so actually ux over uy equal to px over py is the maximizing condition in two good case okay so look for the two good case this is the maximizing conditions well this is generally true but not always true because in economics, we always study some special case of special case. Okay, so you have two special cases. They are called chip corner solution. Okay. So say for some people, okay, maybe they love good X a lot. Okay, as a result, their indifference curve may be very steep. A steep indifference curve means that. If you want to get one more x he is willing to give up many many of y as you can see that okay for a steep indifference curve 
I can increase a little bit number of x while I'm, he's willing to give up this amount of y. Okay, so if the indifference curve is the shape is like this, okay, again, he can extrapolate the indifference curve, extend the indifference curve, okay, shift to the right direction until to the boundary. So here you can see that the maximized condition is that the con the consumer will spend all the money in good X while still in good Y. So here we can see that okay the slope of indifference curve is higher than the slope of the project line. As a result, the consumer will not buy any good Y. While X is equal to the income divided by dx. Okay, and the other case is that the indifference curve is very flat. So this means that the slope of the budget line is less than the slope of the indifference curve. As a result, oh, it's breaking again. As a result, the, the x, the d, x star is zero. And all the income will goes to consuming good Y. So optimal Y will be I over P Y. Okay. <coughs> Alright. So these two are some special case. Although economists usually uh, doesn't make any so stress too much on the corner solutions, the special case. But so you just need to be aware that there exists this possibility. Okay. So Next, we will use the mathematical way to deal with the n good case. For n goods, you cannot draw in the diagram because you can only draw at most three goods. While in n dimension, you, you cannot draw it. Okay, so how to use mathematics to find the optimal consumptions? So this is the utility. The utility, the argument is x1, x2 up to xn. You have n goods to consume. As a result, the budget constraint is P1 times X1 plus P2 times X2. So P1 is price of good one. Okay, P2 is price of good two up to Pn times Xn, which is equal to I. So to do the maximum conditions, we will set up the Lagrangian equation. Set up the Lagrangian. This is equal to the objective function, the utility function, plus the lambda times i minus p1 x1 minus p2 x2 minus up to pn xn okay we put everything to the right hand side then we put this in the budget constraint okay so the lagrangian is the objective function of the utility plus a lambda times the budget constraint <coughs> okay then you need to do the first order condition, rank lambda, rank x1. So this is equal to rank u, rank x1 for the first one. For the second one, you can see x1 here. So minus lambda p1 and set it equal to zero. Okay. Again, for good x2, you still have to do the same things. So up to rank lambda, rank xn. Okay, and at the end, you need to also need to run lambda, run, run Lagrangian, run the lambda. Okay, so this is just equal to i minus p one x one minus p two x two up to minus p n x n, and set it equal to zero. Okay, <coughs> so here you have n plus one variables x one up to x n and lambda. Okay, while you have n plus 1 equations, so theoretically you can find the solutions. So here, based on this first, first order condition, you can derive some implications. First, you can see, okay, look at the first two equations. You can see that rang u derived by rang xi over rang u derived by rang xj is exactly equal to p i over p j okay so actually what is this 
this is the marginal rate of substitution of xi for xj so this is increasing consumption of a good xi and reducing consumption of xj so the marginal utility of x i and a derived by xj is exactly equal to the pl by bj so this is again the first order condition so look remember the two k two good case ux derived by uy is equal to px derived by puy so in n good case we still have the same results okay so the second one the lambda so what is the lambda equal to this is equal to the marginal utility of x1 derived by p1 it's also equal to marginal utility of good x2 divided by p2 okay or equal to round u round x n divided by p n okay so lambda here is the marginal utility derived by, derived by the price okay so this is the marginal utility per dollar lambda is something that the marginal utility per dollar okay it's the average marginal utility so the lambda is actually the benefit to cost ratio the price is how much you pay and the marginal utility is extra you earned okay so finally the implication is that pi is equal to round u round xi derived by lambda again the lambda is average addition of the utility per dollar okay so PI is the maximums you are willing to pay. So why you why you are willing to pay five dollar for the fish ball? Okay, because this is a because the fish ball give you some benefit. So the maximum you are willing to pay is equal to the benefit that the goods can give you. Okay, so here shows that the benefit of the goods derived by the average benefit per dollar should be equal to the price of that goods. So these three are the basic implication by, by these utility maximizations. So next we'll take a look at the indirect utility functions. So uh, I missed some very important things. So before we took take a look at the indirect utility functions. So don't forget we have uh, two the special case, right? The corner solutions. So for the corner solutions. So if just go very quickly, if rang lambda, rang, rang Lagrangian, rang xi. So this is equal to rang u rang xi minus lambda pi okay usually we say equal to zero but sometimes you may think that oh you may find that it is everywhere negative that means the marginal utility is never bigger than some some sort of price so here a rational consumer will not buy any x so diagrammatically this is some sort of so this is the budget line budget constraint this is an indifference curve so this just simply depict the situations, okay? So the marginal utility is steeper than the price. So another implication is that, okay, you put PI to the right-hand side. You can see PI is greater than rang U rang XI derived by lambda. So the price of good I is higher than the benefit it brings, okay? So you don't buy any XI. So on the other hand, rang the l rang j is equal to the marginal utility of xj minus lambda pj so if it is positive that means that the extra benefit resulted from the good j's is always higher than the cost so in this case you still spend everything okay your income will be equal to pj times xj you will spend all the income in this goods so here, PJ, the cost is less than round U, round XJ divided by lambda. The cost is less than the benefit it brings. So these are the two special cases. So 
we, we are going to the indirect utility functions. <coughs> okay. So now you know that the optimal x1 is a function of p1, p2, up to pn and income. While again x2 is a function of p1, p2, up to pn and income. While okay, all for all the other good xn is a function of p1, p2, and pn and i. Okay. So the demand for the goods is the function of all the other price. Okay. So actually, in the past, you are maximizing utility by selecting the x. Okay. While utility is a function of x one x2 up to xn okay you are selecting all the x choosing all the combination of x to maximize your utility so this is exactly equal to maximizing some v function while v function is the price and income okay so on one hand you are maximizing the utility by choosing various consumptions so it is exactly equal to maximizing the cost, the utility by selecting the optimal price and income okay so u is the utility function v is what we call the indirect utility functions so i'm going to show you that how to derive the indirect utility function for by using an example so consider the utility, Cobb Douglas utility function. Okay. So the Lagrangian is equal to x raised to the power a y raised to the power minus a plus lambda. The budget constraint i minus p x x minus p y y. Okay. Then the three condition is rang l rang x rang l rang y and rang l rang lambda. So this is equal to a x raised to the power a minus one times y. Okay, say so equal to zero. The next one is one minus a x raised to the power a y raised to the power minus a minus lambda p y equal to zero. Finally, is just copy the budget constraint. Okay, by the first two equation, you use the first one derived by the second one you get a derived by 1 minus a y equal derived by x is equal to p x over p y okay so by collecting the term collecting the term you can get x is equal to a over 1 minus a times p y over p x times y okay you substitute this relation to the budget constraint you will get i minus p x Okay, copy the expressions. Minus p y y is equal to zero. So by doing this, by solving the equation, you can get optimal y is one minus a times i over p y. Okay. So you substitute the value of y into here you will get x is equal to a i over p x okay so this is the optimal x optimal y then how to find the indirect utility you just replace your original utility function by the, the function of p x p y and i so x is equal to a i over p x so this is equal to a i over p x rather than x okay raised to the power a times the y optimal y is 1 minus a times i derived by py raised to the power 1 minus a okay so this is the indirect utility function the indirect utility function is a function of px py and i okay so this is how you derive the indirect utility functions actually this indirect utility function is very useful in the later parts <coughs> 